Today's lecture is about the three very interesting techniques of retinoscopy. The first technique is called the sweeping technique. The second is called the skewing technique. And the third one, which is very interesting, is called the straggling technique, right? Being a good optometrist, you must have detailed knowledge. You must have detailed knowledge about these terminologies, right? The sweeping, skewing and straddling, right? So we will learn one by one about the detail of these Techniques. Now, first of all, let's learn about the first technique, which is called the sweeping. As you know that in while we are performing retinoscope, retinoscopy, you know that the light which is coming out of the retinoscope is called the streak, right? This is called the streak. We have a detailed video on retinoscopy. So, you know very well that the link is in the description if you want to see you can watch streak is is the light which is coming out of the retinoscope that that light which is coming out of the retinoscope is called streak right and the light which go inside the pupil hit the retina and come back or reflect back that light is called the reflex right streak and reflex right so what is actually the sweeping the sweeping phenomena in the retinoscopy is when we on our retinoscope the light is coming out the streak is coming out i must say the streak is coming out and we are actually moving that streak on the patient's face right or on the patient's eye or you can say on the patient's pupil so that motion that movement of the streak is called the sweeping actually we are sweeping the streak over the patient's eye so that movement is called the sweeping of the retinoscopy right that phenomena is called the sweeping that motion that movement of the streak over the patient's face over the patient's eye over the patient's pupil that motion is called the sweeping the sweeping could be in every direction right uh, as you know that uh, if, if i want to neutralize the vertical meridian right then my streak would be at 180 degree the sweeping would be like this right over the patient's eye like this right and the streak could be move in vertical meridian as we as well like this or in the oblique meridian right so that motion that movement that sweeping of the streak of the retinoscope over the patient's eye in vertical meridian in horizontal meridian or in oblique meridian that movement that motion is called the sweeping of the retinoscopy that technique is called the sweeping now the second technique is called the skewing right what is skewing so in myopic patient or hyperopic patient as we put our streak over the patient's eye as we have discussed so we can see the reflex from the peephole of the retinoscope right so if the streak is at 90 degree we will observe the reflex inside the pupil at 90 degree as well so both the streak and the reflex are at the same meridian right and if the streak is at 180 degree then the reflex inside the pupil will be at 180 degree it means that streak and reflex are at same meridian but in some specific cases of astigmatism right the axis of the streak or the meridian of the streak and meridian of or axis of the reflex are not at same plane they are at different planes suppose if i put my streak at 90 degree over the patient's eye the reflex could be inside the pupil the reflex could be at different axis or at different meridian like suppose if the axis if my if the axis of my streak are at 90 degree the reflex could be at 45 degree at oblique meridian right or if the reflex of my streak at 180 degree the reflex inside the pupil could be at 135 axis at oblique meridian so this could be happen in a specific type of astigmatism right so how can we manage this condition and we can manage this condition by the process which is called skewing and how when suppose for example i just said that if the axis of my if the meridian of my or if the axis of my uh, streak are at 90 degree and suppose if i am finding finding the reflex inside the patient's pupil at 45 degree you can see 
the streak at 90 degree and reflex at 45 degree so to manage this condition i have to put my streak at the same plane as the patient's reflex if the reflex at 45 degree if the reflex which is observing inside the patient's pupil is at 45 degree while my streak was at 90 degree i have to put my streak to align with the reflex at 45 degree right so that alignment of the reflex and streak is called skewing i want to say that the meridian or the axis of the streak and the reflex should be the same right so that superimposition of streak over the patient's reflex is called skewing hope you understand about the skewing and now the last technique of the retinoscopy or in the retinoscopy is called the straddling the straddling is very interesting and very complex as well but very easy right so straddling so before learning about the straddling i will teach you from the beginning suppose this is our optical cross and the neutral point at vertical meridian is plus 3 and the neutral point at 180 degree or horizontal meridian is plus 4 these are neutral points the working distance was same 67 centimeter the conversion you know very well about the conversion we have a detailed video we have detailed lectures about retinoscopy so we will convert this 67 centimeter into diopteric form and that would be 1.5 diopters we have a detailed video right that link is in the description you can watch if you want so plus 3 at 90 degree and plus 4 at 180 degree these are neutral points at different meridians right the working distance uh, is 67 cent centimeter Con after conversion the 1.5 diopters right so now we have to deduct this working distance from these neutral points algebraically so we will deduct as you can see we have to deduct 1.5 from plus 3 and we have to deduct 1.5 working distance from plus 4 right so the answer is if we deduct 1.5 from 3 the answer would be 1.50 sign would be of plus because the bigger amount is with the plus sign and now if we deduct 1.5 from plus 4 the answer would be would be 2.5 right the, uh, the sign would be of plus because the bigger value is with the plus sign so we can take spherical 1.5 or plus 2.5 right so for example we take plus 2.50 as our uh, okay we can say our spherical correction it's your choice you can choose your spherical as plus 1.5 or you can choose your spherical as plus 2.5 right so i will choose 1.5 as my spherical correction right so for cylinder i have to move from plus 1.5 to 2.5 right so i have to find the gap between two these two values right and the gap is one right so the sign would be we are actually moving from least plus value to the greater plus value the sign would be of plus we have plus 1.5 sapphire with plus 1 cylinder and what are the axes this is actually the point this point is about the straddling technique right we will start our straddling technique from here from that point so you know that for gaining the rough axis right we take the meridian of the axis of the cylinder the same as the spherical correction right our spherical correction was 1.5 and spherical correction was at 90 degree as you can say 1.5 is at 90 degree so 90 degree would be our rough axis these are our axis but these axes are not refined axis these axes are not corrected axis we have to find the best corrected axis for our patient's prescription so to find the best corrected axis or refined axis we use the technique which is called the straddling technique. So to learn about the straddling technique, suppose 
our spherical correction was 1.5 plus which is before